line and they want to see, you know, down to the, the individual genetic sequences, but then they want to be able to zoom out and mm -hmm. see the larger picture. So fine detail and then the larger context in which it resides is, is useful. Uh, like here, you can see the actual, the actual neurons and the, the formation of the neurons, but then how they go across the different uh, layers of the brain, and, and that actually tells you information processing in the structure of the brain. So you can see the larger structure that it sits in, but then you can see it down to the individual fiber layer. Could I insert one thought here? Yeah. Um, you can get a, a big image with a projector, but when you step to it and you're you're working with the group here, you've got two problems. One is your body's going to occlude it, and the second is the projector is um, not going to have as much resolution as a bunch of tile displays. So I can be in here and actually be reading the text on someone else's Word document that they you know, beamed in from remotely um, and still have all this screen real estate. So it, you know, it's expensive, it's cumbersome in some ways, but it does have some unique advantages. So following up on that a little bit, one of the, this lab is about, what we, the reason we formed this lab in part was to understand collaborations, to understand what it takes to get teams to work really well together. I think it's a, know it's a fundamental part of everything we do at NASA and in the world in general. So we want to really understand how we can best do that. Um, so this lab is really about investigating that more than more than um, particular accomplishment per se. We want to actually understand the structure of how you do that. And and part one of the one of the test cases uh, we haven't yet done, but but this was designed and we thought about doing in this room is proposal writing, for example. Mm -hmm. So how do you, as John was saying, how do you take a whole bunch of screens with the whole pages of a proposal, which we, these days, somebody puts them on a wall. So you print them out, you put them on a wall, and you can In fact, my living room right now, I'm <laughs> yeah. I have a proposal due tomorrow, and my living room is is covered with pieces of paper, you know, so I can see it all at once, and yeah. lock it up, and then we go through the editor. So this is part cycle. of, this, that's part of how we, um, still, could you go to that mouse, yeah. and then... Just open up that second dock on the upper right. On here? Yeah. Go go down to get back into your Mac. All the way down. Oh. Off the screen. Yeah. Okay. Now you're back in the Mac. Yeah, open that thing up. So the typical scenario might be um, we're so all talking about a mission and we're talking about different approaches to you know moving something around. And we're here at Ames. Uh, Estelle is in Washington, D.C. with her Mac Mini. Um, and then maybe uh, Michael is down in Texas or something. So um, I'm able to control the, the position of all of those screens here with my little gyro mouse. So just so, so, um, so we have orientation. This so th this here. one here, yeah, is, is that one. This, uh, this is my laptop over there, but it could be anywhere. So it's you start to lose track. Internet. <laughs> and, um, and then this is native on the wall. So right just here. just for clarity, the that Mac and this Mac were VNC connected to the wall. Right. This mm -hmm. mouse actually it's, directly wired. It's what we're using right now is all free open source software. Um, so um, this this screen can be up in here, and I can say, okay, um, Estelle, tell us about what's happening on, over here, blah blah blah, and they're like, okay, well that's interesting. We're going to uh, table that for a sec. And now we're going to come over to Michael's screen, and he's going to tell us about whatever. And Michael can not only um, talk about his little slice there, but there's another application that lets you um, actually get a, a kind of thumbnail view of the wall, even when you're remote. So if you can see that, yeah. um, you, can, you can see what's going on there. So, um, Michael can reposition his window on the, the large wall. So um, it, it has a lot of tools for working with a, a multi-user environment within all of that space. And, and by the way, we're, we're sort of we'll, we're rambling and we'll continue to ramble and tell you about this. Right. <laughs> Interrupt us and redirect us anytime you want. And then the other thing is questions. that you can mirror if you have another wall in another location. Um, you can mirror two walls. So when we connect down to UCSD um, with one of our partners down there, and there's a, a little handout on the Cal IT2 
too, which is the lab at UCSD that we collaborate with. Um, we can connect the walls and mirror what we have, so you can have a team there working on something and see exactly what they're seeing on the wall. And then you can video con. You know, it's a, we've tried it both ways where you have the video con on the wall versus the video con as though they're, they're part of your audience. Personally, I prefer it set up so that it's part of the audience, so that they're part of your team. It's really more like your team is together looking at the same wall. Um, but you could also do it so that they're on the wall looking at you. And, and it really, you know, what we've found with the institutes is meetings change very fluidly. So sometimes in the middle of the meeting, we'll be changing the layout of the technologies that you're using. So we'll move from someone presenting to where it's like a one-to-many broadcast. And then we'll move to more interactive. So we'll change the windows so that it's more interactive. You just start to get almost an intuitive sense after a while of what's needed. But having that flexibility is important so you're not you know, statically locked into one piece.